Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome to the Friday Wrap for today, 11, 11. Let's try that again. November 27th, 2015. It's the day after American Thanksgiving. Uh, I am full of food and still a little sleepy, though I woke up pretty early this morning, which is good. I'm back on a normal sleeping schedule, which for me is always an accomplishment. Um, but if you celebrated yesterday, I hope you had an awesome Thanksgiving. If you didn't celebrate, well, I just hope you had an awesome Thursday and you still got a weekend ahead of you. So hopefully this weekend is going to be really good for you. I know a lot of college kids are going to be coming home and they're going to have basically all of the rest of uh, the next two to three weeks off. Enjoy that. Uh, don't do too much work. Try to just enjoy being with family. Enjoy the holiday season, whether you uh, celebrate Christmas, whether you celebrate uh, Hanukkah, whether you celebrate Kwanzaa, if Kwanzaa's in this time of year, I don't even know, or if you just enjoy December and winter, just enjoy yourself, man, enjoy yourself and, uh, and relax, all right, that's all I really want to say about that, uh, today's vlog is going to be a little different, um, for a number of reasons, uh, but mostly because I wanted to kind of approach today's vlog with a bit of a topic to discuss, maybe something I'll be doing more often in the future, um, but a lot of, I get this a lot, um, and I think it's just been happening a lot more recently because the holidays are coming up, uh, but I get a lot of emails and a lot of uh, Facebook messages and YouTube messages and stuff talking about people who are around high school age saying, you know, they're going through a rough time in school or they're going through a rough time with family, they don't know if it's going to get any better, they're they're depressed, they're sad, they're, they're happy that my video is around because it makes them feel a little bit better, but how are they going to get through it, does it get better? Uh, and, and I get that kind of message with surprising regularity. I get that often. Um, and this, this, I did a video two years ago now, maybe a little longer. Um, it was back in my old apartment. I remember doing it because I, I remember doing it late at night after work playing Euro Truck Simulator, actually, um, where I, I actually addressed this. And I'm going to do it again because the only way I can really discuss it is kind of comparing it to my experience. So I'm actually going to talk about my high school experience what it was like for me, um, and to just kind of give you an example that it does get better, and this it gets better before my YouTube thing even happened. So you can't you can't be like, well, it got better for you, man, it's because you became YouTube successful, and it's like, no, it actually got better well before that. Um, but yeah, I guess I guess we're gonna be talking about a little bit of my high school experience uh, and what it was like for me f to go through high school. Um, I was in high school. From 2000 to 2004, I was a class of 2004, so it kind of puts a little bit of an age on me. But um, surprisingly, I don't think high school is that much different outside of technology. Uh, kids can be kids, and kids are mean in general. Um, but for me, and I'm going to put it pretty bluntly, high school was hell for me. Um, it was awful almost up until the very end. Um, I remember hating going to school every single day. Um, this was well before, you know, ADHD and ADD was a well-accepted thing. Um, I had gotten tested for it and everything. Uh, just in, as far as grades are concerned, uh, I did well enough. I got through. I graduated. Um, I would like to say I'm a smart person, but I I have a very, very difficult time concentrating unless I'm incredibly passionate about it, which we've come to learn, you know, is, is a form of ADHD. Uh, I have to move a lot. I fidget a lot. I'm, I'm tapping my foot. I'm always moving. And in school at the time for me, that was something that was kind of looked down upon um, at the time. And I can't blame my parents for it. You know, I got tested for ADHD. I got tested positive, very, very positive for it. But they didn't want me on medicine. They didn't want me to use ADHD as an excuse for doing poorly in school. And looking back, both them and myself wish I had gotten put on a form of something so that when I was in school, I had an easier time concentrating because I just remember being in class. And it was almost it's, – it's hard to explain if you don't suffer from it in a way um, what it's like to try and, and sit still when your brain – does not want anything to do with sitting still. You you need to move, you need to fidget, you need to do something. And if you're being forced to sit still and be quiet, I, it's almost like taking all that energy I would have been using to learn, I was using it to 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 stop myself from fidgeting. Like that that was really difficult for me. And in that, uh, especially in difficult classes, I was never good at math. Uh, it really fucked like my my grades. It fucked my concentration. Um, I had such a hard time doing it, but that's not really what made high school hell. It made it difficult for me when it came to uh, grades and family and getting kind of berated for doing poorly. Um, but uh, 
that that wasn't what really made school hell. A lot of the messages I get, from my understanding, it seems like it's it's the kid thing. So let me explain, like I said, my kind of high school life back when I was 13, 14, 15, all the way till I was like 17. So I went into high school, um, four foot 11, 86 pounds, very prepubescent. Uh, I was actually a very late bloomer when it came to hitting puberty, and um, I remember going in in ninth grade, um, and for those who are not maybe in America, like that, you know, ninth grade is a freshman in high school, you're looking at like 14 years old maybe. Um, I remember I got assigned a locker, and we had a big locker room, and there were lockers that were double stacked, so it was a locker on the bottom and a locker on the top, and then there were single big lockers, but those were saved. In the first locker room, those are saved for 10th graders, and in the second locker room, those are saved for seniors. And I was very lucky enough in my 10th and senior year to get one of those, because not every 10th grader and not every 12th grader got one of them, but I got them. Those got keys, and that was cool. You were a kid with a key, and if you weren't driving, which typically in 10th grade and even seniors, not everybody was driving, you had a key, man. You had a key, and you had a lanyard, and you had it in your pocket, and your lanyard was hanging out of your pocket, and... You know, this is, I went to a Catholic school, so we were all in uniforms, and that signified a sweet fucking locker. Um, but in ninth grade, you don't get that. And I got assigned a top locker, because again, they were stacked. And I remember I had to have my locker changed, because I was so short that I couldn't see the combination. They were not key lockers, they were combination lockers. And I could not see the combination uh, at the top for me to unlock my own locker, so they had to reassign me to a locker that was shorter. Why is that important? Well, kids are very mean, as I said early on, and this my st short stature was the target to many school bullies. Um, we, like I said, we went to a Catholic school, so school bullies weren't like the typical from from my other friends who I was friends with in elementary school who went to public high schools. They dealt with a lot of like bomb threats, I guess, which I never dealt with. But these school bullies in, me, in my school, my school was really renowned for hockey, um, they were the kind that'll just push you around and make fun of you and laugh at you, and uh, my short stature meant I got, would get shoved in a locker at one point in my life, and I remember that pretty, pretty well, um, getting kind of shoved around and stuff and, and being made fun of for how small I was and my squeaky voice at the time, uh, very high-pitched voice, uh, I had a very big head too. Uh, and I was a very sheltered child as well. My mom would brush my hair in ninth and 10th grade. It, it, that stopped eventually around 11th grade. Um, but I remember being made fun of for everything. Uh, I was a nerd. I joined anime club. That was a, a, a very sore subject that kids would push me around and make fun of me for, for, for enjoying and going to anime club. Um, again, I was short. I had a big head. Uh, I get pushed around and made fun of for that. And... Uh, video games. Man, video games. Now, I was very lucky in that I had one or two very good friends in high school. And uh, I'm in touch with one of them still to this day. He's a very good friend of mine. Um, but there was I kind of wish I had kept touch with the other ones. Cause I don't know what they're really up to nowadays. And, and they were they were my lifeline, man. If you have a good friend, one or two good friends in high school, man, hang on to them. Do not let them go because they are going to be the ones that get you through every day. Uh, I remember m my good friend that I still am in, t in touch with now. His name's Dave. Um, he he ran uh, – well, later on he ran the anime club. But I met him in anime club. Um, and he was the reason I got through most of my days because uh, at the end of the day – well. During lunch, if we had the same lunch period, we would we would eat and hang out and talk video games and talk lunch, and talk anime. And then at the end of every school day, we both had to wait for our parents to come pick us up because none of us drove at least right away. Um, and we I remember this this certain spot in the new wing of school. It was a freshly built wing that was only a year or two old. Uh, it was right near the door, near the guidance counselor's office, kind of away from the locker rooms and away from the kids. There was a bench, and there was a Jesus statue right there. And he was doing like the whole like this kind of thing, and it was really funny. Uh, we would make fun of Buddy Jesus always there. Um, but we, we would sit on the bench and we would spend the next hour, hour and a half going through video game magazines, talking about the games we were playing and, uh, talking about the animes we were watching. And this was back in the day where I would buy Neon Genesis Evangelion VHSs for $25 a piece that only had two episodes on them. Uh, and we would just sit there for hours. And I looked forward to that every single day because during the day, I never felt so alone. During the day, I would be pushed around. I would be made fun of. I would be poked at. I'd be, uh, I never got like 
punched, but like shoved around a lot because kids thought it was funny. And there's a couple of kids in particular um, whose names I won't really call out uh, on the really rare chance that they they see my stuff. Um, but uh, there's one experience. God, there's one experience that really sticks out, and I, for some reason, this particular instance really effed with me, because. You know, make fun of me for playing video games. Make fun of me for watching anime. That didn't bother me because at the end of the day, I was going to go play video games and be the hero of that video game world. I was going to go watch anime and disappear into it. You can make fun of me for it, but I loved it to the point where I eventually ran Anime Club and I would put on like little uh, intercom ads to people who wanted to join Anime Club because I wanted to bring those people together and we could enjoy this cool hobby that we had. Fuck the haters, man. Make fun of me all you want. It doesn't matter. But the one, th the one time... I mean, it happened a lot, but I remember being made fun of, uh, it was health. It was, it was during health class. Um, I was walking in and it was a, well, I guess it was well known. I don't know why it was well known, but I had a crush on this one girl and I had a crush on her almost all through high school. Um, she was one of those girls that I probably shouldn't have had a crush on because she was the kind of girl who would date the hockey players and date the musician. She dated like around the popular kids. That was her thing. Incredibly smart. Number one in our class, uh, eventually became a doctor. I think, um, had a huge crush on her all the time. And I would tell her best friend and I would always hope for some reason that she would like eventually fall in love with me and, and we'd, we'd date and it wouldn't, it would never happen. Clearly. Uh, we, we were night and day. We had no similar interests whatsoever. But it, it got out that I that I had a crush on her, uh, you know, 15-year-old Mathis. And I remember walking in to health class, and she was in the health, same health class as I was. And there was this kid and his little freaking little gang of friends. There was like three of them. And they all sit in the same area, and they would throw paper balls at me all class. And they thought it was hilarious. They would be laughing and shit. Oh, I, can, I, I can picture his stupid fucking face. And is laughing to this day. And he got up and he started to talk about the girl I liked. We'll call her freaking Samantha. Um, and he started to make fun of me about it. This girl I liked. He's like, I hear you like this girl. You hear you like, like just making fun of her. And I, she's like, maybe she's in this class. Maybe she, the girl you like is in this class. Ooh, do you think she likes you back? Clearly saying shit that, I, that he knows isn't true but would get to me. I remember my face going beet red because she was there. And I picked up my bag and I went to the back of the class, away, out of his sight, because I was sitting in the front of the class. I went to the back of the class, out of his sight. He would turn around and be like, what's the matter? You're afraid Samantha is going to find out? And it's like, we already know she knows. She already knows. So not only now is he bring, like making fun of me. This is before the teacher came into the class, because we would get there early, uh, five minutes beforehand. And he started making fun of me. And I remember being beat red. And I just sat there and I took it. And I just remember the gut-wrenching feeling of being made fun of. And then I know she was probably embarrassed as all hell because it's this nerdy kid, nerdy Mike, likes her. And God, that must be so embarrassing. Um, <laughs> and he was just relentless, throwing erasers at me, throwing pieces of paper at me. Um, God, I just remember. And that, that happened so often. And, you know, my home life was, was very good. Um, but towards the end of high school, it would get a little bit worse, and that was very difficult. But I remember at that moment, I picked up my bag. I was on the verge of crying, but fuck him if he was going to get the ability to see me cry. I fucking – I just gave him the finger, and I walked out. And I broke down into tears in the hallway. My teacher saw me and walked by, um, and he didn't say anything. I just remember walking by him. He saw me leaving and walking away. He didn't say anything. I never got in trouble for it. I took like 20 minutes to myself and I eventually went back into class, uh, you know, probably red eyed and stuff. And obviously they couldn't say anything anymore because the teacher was there. But that that instant sticks with me. And I think it, it sticks with me because that was that was the crux of my every day. That was every day I was made fun of for something. And I didn't cry every day and I very rarely cried. Um, but that like there would be times where it would eventually build up and I would cry. And I would never. I remember thinking, like, like I, how am I gonna get through? This is gonna be ridiculous. I have like four years of this bullshit. You know, how am I gonna get through this? But at the end of every day, I knew I was gonna see my good friend Dave. We were gonna be able to talk video games and talk anime, and then all that bad stuff was gonna go away. 
And you might not have a Dave to hang out with at the end of the day. Who knows? Maybe at your school you don't have any friends and you just get pushed around like I did. And you get shoved in lockers and you cry and you don't know what you're going to do. But there, you have something I did not have when I was in high school. You have something that was like such a little a baby infant stage when I was in high school that it existed. But it wasn't like it was today. And that, my friends, is the glorious internet. You might not have a Dave to go to or another friend of your, like somebody that you can go hang out with at the end of the day or you can hide to, that every day at school you are picked on, pushed around by these fucking assholes who, for the most part, are going to be working the same fucking 9 to 5 job you're going to be working when you're in, in school or out of school or in college or whatever and are going to amount to fucking nothing when you're finally out of school. And you're going to become, if you fucking take, harness that energy and work hard, you can become something. Um, but trust me, those kids, before I talk about what you have, those kids, and I, I followed them, man, all through college, I followed them on Facebook and I was figuring out what they were doing with their lives. And even when I was just working in the restaurant and going down that management path, they were doing the same fucking shit I was. Didn't matter how popular they were in high school. Didn't matter the star hockey player on the hockey team, if that's what they were, because they have a one in a million shot of getting into the NHL. Um, don't worry about that or any football team or basketball, or whatever. Trust me, they can be the star fucking football player, or basketball player on their team. But if they're dicks, there's a very low chance they're going to be getting on any pro team, period. They're going to be doing the same shit you're going to be doing. And for the most part, when they grow up, they become a little bit more friendly. A lot of the problem is hormones, right? They're there to fucking fuck girls. And that's all they can think about. Trust me, it's all I could think about when I was in high school. But they are actually able to do it and they feel feel superior to you and they rub it in your goddamn face. Trust me. Trust me. You have to believe me. I'm 29 years old. Throw that out there. They do not become these superstars. They're reveling in their glory now when they're this the age that I am. They're just doing their typical 9 to 5 bullshit and the nerds in high school who were smart and did well and worked hard you guys are the ones that are going to succeed you guys are the one that's going to get a good job you guys are the ones that's going to do well and be happy later in life you just have to get through this shitty fucking part high school fucking sucks for nerds maybe it's not as bad now but when it was it was when i was younger but you guys have the internet is what i was getting at you may not have a friend to hang out with during or after school you might be alone you might be picked on but you have the internet and one of the things I love about YouTube and the channel that I created is I'm trying to create this place where these people who love video games, have a passion for the stuff that I have a passion for, can run to and watch and enjoy and can point at and see, say, see, asshole, bully, me and 163,000 other people love this type of stuff. I'm not alone. Even though you want to make me feel alone, even though you make me feel like I'm the only one who likes what I fucking like, I'm not. And you're not. You're not alone. I promise you a thousand times over, you are not alone in enjoying the nerdy shit. So don't let it happen because take it from somebody who spent four years in high school getting picked on, even spent plenty of time, in, uh, a lot of time in elementary school getting picked on and shoved on and, and made fun of for liking what I liked. Trust me, you're not alone. And if it takes the internet to make you realize that, then I'm super happy the internet exists. There are subreddits that exist out there for video game lovers. There are YouTube channels that exist purely for the love of video games. There are content creators who sit here and say, holy shit, I made my passion a profession and I can share that passion with hundreds of thousands of other people. You're not alone. Don't think you're alone. You're not. And I want you to remember that and I want you to hold on to it. All those people who are sending me messages, all those people who are telling me that they are picked on and how is it going to get any better and is it going to get any better, I promise you, I promise you, especially in college, is really, really starts to get better. You're going to find so many more people like you. And if you don't, there's the internet. I promise you, there are millions of people that are just like you. You're not alone. Get through it. I have faith you can get through it. If I could get through it, you can get through it. Fuck the haters. I promise it gets better. I kind of ranted there for a bit, but I hope you understand why I'm saying what I'm saying. Um, and I might do this a little bit more often as in like find a topic to talk about for the Friday wrap. But mwah, you're not alone, friends. Hang tight. High school sucks, but it does come to a close eventually. Till then, have a fantastic weekend. 
and I'll see you next Friday. Bye-bye.